Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this month's non-farm payrolls webinar on Friday, the 9th of March, and the February payrolls report. Before I get started, I have to do a little bit of a housekeeping in the form of various uh, various disclaimers. Um, so basically, it's just a reminder to say that anything that uh, you hear from me over the course of the next half an hour is um, should not be construed as direct trading advice. Um, I'll obviously highlight some the important key levels, um, what effect that I think um, the numbers may well have on the overall direction of the markets, and hopefully um, try and shed some light on where there is um, significant shade. But as I say, once um, once we get the risk warnings out of the way. I can uh, I can get started, and that's precisely what we're about to do. So, right, we've got the price action up, and when I when I looked ahead to this week, I have to say I really thought that the payrolls number would probably be the one of the important items, um, certainly in terms of direction for the U.S. dollar this week. Turns out that there are, have other been factors at play. Obviously, we've got the discussions about um, trade tariffs and trade, um, Mr. Trump's uh, decision to implement a 25% tariff on steel and a 10% tariff on aluminium, subject to certain caveats and opt-outs. So markets have reacted rather well to that. I'm just wondering whether or not that is basically a, um, a risk-on or a risk-off scenario deferred or whether or not it's Mr. Trump's way of essentially extricating himself from a fairly tricky situation. That being said, we've seen a decent rebound in equity markets this week, and I use the term advisedly. We haven't in any way um, reversed the gains of last week. We've managed to pull back some of the losses, um, and we can certainly see that in the context of, say, for example, the S&P 500, which is currently trading around 27.36. Now, this particular chart, I have a particular interest in because at the moment this is a four-hour chart. So I've drawn a number of Fibonacci levels in here on a slightly longer term basis. And this was a chart that I looked at quite some time ago with respect to this 2745 level um, in the aftermath of the rebound of the February lows. We did pop above it for a couple of days, but um, we weren't able to sustain those moves higher and have subsequently pushed back lower again. But the dip that we've seen hasn't been particularly substantial. And that suggests to me that maybe, just maybe, we could be looking to carve out a base. But what we really need to see here, I think, is a move back above this 27.45, 27.46 level. At the moment, there doesn't appear to be an awful lot of momentum behind this particular move. But we are coming into the weekend. We have seen a significant rebound thus far this week, one, two, three, four successive um, daily rises. So um, the rebound that we've seen has been quite substantial. But in the context of the overall down move that we've got here, that we saw the week before, we haven't quite been able to completely reverse it. Once again, US markets are diverging slightly away from what European markets are doing. Because if we compare this, say, for example, the S&P, to, for example, the Germany 30 or the DAX, we can see that the rebound in the DAX has been much more subdued. We can see that in the basis of this particular Fibonacci retracement chart here that I've just drawn in. But again, in a similar fashion to the DAX, we have seen, um, we, we, we didn't see a break of the February lows. Um, we, we fell a little bit short of it. Obviously, this is our chart. It doesn't match the underlying chart, but nonetheless, there does appear to be some evidence of a little bit of a break. Sorry about that. I was trying to get away without coughing and I failed abysmally. I do apologize for that if I've just deafened you all. So looking at 12,420, I think is the key level on the top side with respect to the DAX. Now let's drill that down a little bit into four hours because on a four hour chart, we do look a little bit overbought. Now that's not to say that um, we can't trade above it. And certainly if we look at the price action here, we can see that we're making higher highs and higher lows. 
but we're hitting a bit of a barrier around this 12,420 level and we are looking a little bit overbought and we do have negative divergence on the slow stochastic so once again I think the question I would be asking given the rebound that we've seen today what will it take to ratchet, a, ratchet us even higher and I'm not convinced this payrolls report will do that now yesterday's European Central Bank meeting of those of you who listened to my periscope recording earlier today was on the face of it either hawkish or dovish depending on who you speak to now personally despite the fact that they took that paragraph out with respect to the guidance I felt it was more on the dovish side than the hawkish side which does explain to a certain extent why the euro has fallen off those highs that we saw um, yesterday at 120 just above 124 now I've been talking about this box range in the euro for quite some time now around about the the, the, top, the tops around about 125 and the lows around about 120 160 but what what I think what we can be sure of is if the if this is a good number this is a good payrolls number and in particular I'm looking at the year on year average earnings number which was 2.9 percent last month a large part of that was because 18 US states raised the level of their minimum wage and that helped ratchet the overall average quite a bit higher what I'm looking for is to see whether or not we come in anywhere near close to that 2.9 percent the forecast is for 2.8 the Federal Reserve this week in its beige book suggested that wage pressures are building up yet for all of that and this is something that I've been thinking about quite a lot the labor market still appears to have an awful lot of slack in it now what do I mean by that well ultimately the, the US jobs market is still adding 200,000 jobs month on month well that doesn't suggest to me that the labor market is tightening up it still suggests to me there's still plenty of jobs out there and the wage growth that is that which has been lacking is only now starting to trickle down or trickle up depending on however whatever adjective you want to use with respect to that so the wage growth is important and certainly in the context of where the dollar goes to next it's doubly important but will it be enough to really ratchet us out of the range that we've been in over the course of the past few weeks and I'm doubtful about that let's look at this 91 level I've talked about it um, at great length over the course of the last few weeks now at the beginning of March we saw a bearish daily reversal on the dollar index or a key reversal day now we have rebounded back in the past two or three days but this just suggests to me that we're in a little bit of a range but what I would say is that it's not in the interest of the European Central Bank for the euro to get stronger so a weaker euro should be mildly supportive of the DAX and we certainly saw that yesterday in the aftermath of the ECB rate meeting when the euro went up above 124 European stocks rolled over and went into negative territory as soon as the um, euro ran out of steam up above 124 the DAX started to push higher again and I think something similar could play out today if we get a fairly decent payrolls number now there's two numbers that I'm going to be paying particular attention to today the most important number is obviously the average earnings number but the second number is the unemployment rate and that's expected to fall back from 4.1 to 4 percent it's also um, for our Canadian clients the Canadian jobs report and that could be particularly important in the context of dollar CAD now I did do a little brief periscope update earlier this week on dollar CAD unfortunately I think I would have needed a bit more of it, a bit more than a periscope because the trade probably would have gone underwater um, simply because of the fact that I was suggesting that it was a sell the rally type of trade it was but we squeezed all the way back to 130 now that 130 is likely to be a significant barrier to further dollar Canada gains having said that if we get a decent Canadian jobs report that could actually offset a decent US jobs report and push the Canadian dollar the dollar CAD or the Canadian dollar higher the dollar CAD lower the Canadian dollars also got a bit of a boost because they have carved out an exemption from those um, tariffs that um, President Trump is implementing in 15 days time and I think that's another reason why 
you've got what I would call a little bit of a deferred or a delayed reaction. Equity markets are pretty underwhelming at the moment, certainly here in Europe. We're down pretty much across the board. The DAX is down a half a percent. The FTSE is down around about one tenth of one percent. And, and the CAC current is, is round about flat. But in the context of the gains that we've seen so far this week, it's, that's, I, th I think that's neither here nor there. I think if we get a decent jobs report, then I think equity markets could start to wedge back towards the top end of this week's range. Um, so the FTSE 100 could well edge back above 7,200. A decent Canadian jobs report, and here the bar is very low because in January we saw a big um, decline in Canadian employment. 88,000 jobs were lost in January and part-time employment as well showed a very, very big loss. And I think that's one of the reasons why the Bank of Canada decided to keep rates on hold earlier this week. So I think any sort of any sort of Canadian jobs report that comes in slightly better than expected is likely to see dollar CAD push down through 128.75 towards the 128 level. A poor number and a decent US jobs report, and we're going to go probably back above 129.30. Um, and I think that's really the I think that's really the key level that I'm paying particular attention to with the Canadian jobs report. Now, in terms of the overall dollar direction, we've seen a pretty decent rebound in dollar yen in the past few days. We can see that here. This could be the potential for a little bit of a saucer bottom here or a rounded bottom. You've got a little bit of a left shoulder here, perhaps a little bit of a neckline there. But for me, the important level, I think, in dollar yen is not only the highs that we saw at the beginning of March around about 107, but 107.20, 107.30. But this does appear here to show that there is a little bit of a, a little bit of a short squeeze building up on the dollar yen. Certainly, if we look at the client sentiment um, indicator, the market is fun. Our, our, our top clients are fundamentally long in terms of cash value. That's usually a decent indicator of um, the way the market's positioned with respect to dollar yen. And to be quite honest, looking at that, it's a fairly sensible position to hold, given how close to the lows that we are. But it also does make us very susceptible to a fall back down. If I draw a trend line in here, then we've got a little bit of a short term break above here. The big question is, can we sustain it? Now, at the moment, around about 106.85, I think a decent payrolls number will see us move higher towards 107.30. Euro dollar, similar sort of story with respect to here. Now, we've been talk I've been talking about this 126 level for quite some time now. I talked about it yesterday in my Periscope update. Here we've seen a very significant down move. Now the 50 day moving average for me is the next significant support level and below that these lows that we saw in the middle of February around about 122.10, 122.30, 2030. I still think we're in a range in euro dollar. So I, I wouldn't expect us in the event of a good payrolls number to go much below 122, 121.60. In the event of a bad payrolls number, we could well head back towards around 123.70, 120, uh, 123.80, 124, there or thereabouts. Certainly, looking at the four-hour chart, again, we can we can see that here. It's not really conclusive, but I think what it is telling us is that we are susceptible to a little bit of a short squeeze, maybe back to around about 123.50, given that we have a significant area of support all the way around about. Through 122.60, 122.70, so we might get a little bit of a push down there before a squeeze back. Um, quickly go on to the pound against the dollar before we get cracking. Um, and again, it's a similar sort of story. This is a four-hour chart, looking a little bit, looking a little bit oversold on the four-hour chart. But again, in the context of an overall downtrend from those highs that we saw around about. 143. Um, I still think that the pound is fairly well supported on dips. 137.10.20 was last week's lows. We've also got the 136.20 level, which was the previous peaks in September, which we broke through. I think that's probably going to be a fairly decent area of support if we get down there, though I am a little bit concerned by the fact that we're getting lower highs and we're getting lower lows. So I think to break this downward cycle, we really need to get back through 139.80. I don't, certainly don't think that's likely today. So I think it's very 
very much a question of picking your levels with respect to currencies and the US dollar. And looking at the US 10 year yield, that's around about 287. It's not too dissimilar from where it was a week ago. So, certainly no clues with respect to whether or not we're going to get three or four US rate rises this year. But here we go, here are the numbers. Two point six, so that's disappointing. That's a bad number. It's not a particularly good number on the average earnings. Slightly dollar negative there, but the payrolls numbers three hundred and thirteen. So the market's probably not going to know, no, not going to want to be a little bit uncertain as to what it wants to do at these sorts of levels. That's a bumper U.S. payrolls number, but it also reinforces what I was saying about slack in the U.S. labour market. So I think the initial knee-jerk reaction is. To buy, to, to sort of sell euro dollar, buy the dollar on the payrolls headline number, but on the wages number, it suggests to me that potentially this talk of four US rate rises this year is probably a little bit premature and maybe we're only going to get three. So, you know, this it's one of those numbers that it's got everything, something for everybody. It's got something for the hawks and it's got something for the doves. But ultimately, the headline number 313, the revision higher. For January 239, um, that suggests to me there's still plenty of slack in the US labor market. And as such, this talk of four US rate rises this year, I think, um, if I'm interpreting the way I would interpret it, is that it's premature. And as such, the likelihood is that it's likely to probably be more dollar negative than dollar positive. It's probably going to be a little bit of a tug of war at this point in time with respect to where we go to next. But certainly I think the reaction of dollar yen does appear to be the right. I don't think I don't think it's the right one. I think we could test higher towards around about 107.20, 107.30. But I can't imagine us really moving significantly above that. Um, certainly I think if we look at the US 10 year yield, that should give us some indication as to whether or not the way the market's interpreting it. The market's interpreting it as yields positive which I find rather surprising. The 10-year yields just hit 289. It is backing off that now, around about 288.28, but it did hit a high of 289.38 on those numbers, and it's now starting to back off a little bit. But my gut feeling is, and this is really all I have to go on with respect to how these numbers get interpreted, is that on the face of it, the headline number, it's, 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 a, it's a decent number, but is it enough to reinforce the case for four rate rises? And I would argue it's not. So ultimately, it's going to be positive for stocks and a little bit negative for the US dollar over the course of the rest of the afternoon. Looking at dollar CAD again, let's have a look at that. And yes, I mean, I think that's the right reaction in dollar CAD to move lower simply because the Canadian jobs report pretty much came in as it was. 15.4, it was slightly less than was expected, but it was a significant improvement on the number that we saw in January. Also, looking at um, looking at the other Canadian numbers, part-time employment also rose 54 points, 54,000, um, which was a significant improvement of the 137,000. So I think the the way the, the Canadian dollar is reacting with respect to that is that. The January numbers were a bit of a one-off, and dollar CAD should now, I think, come down and test the 128 level, which was around about these lows that we saw in February. Now, before I move on to anything else, ladies and gents, is there anything, um, any, is there any market that you guys would like me to cover that I haven't covered already? Because what I'm going to do now is actually have a look at Sterling CAD, because I think with respect to Sterling CAD, I noticed something on that earlier today which was actually quite interesting in terms of the overall direction of travel. And we can see that there is some evidence that Sterling CAD may well have topped out. Um, so that could be another proxy for a little bit of a long Canada trade. Watch Sterling Canada head back towards around about 177, maybe um, 176 or 175. So Sterling CAD does look a little bit bearish. If we can look at the weekly chart, we could see that even more so with respect to this um, weekly chart here. This could well be, to, this could well turn out to be a gravestone doji on the weekly chart, which is historically um, a fairly bearish, um, it's a fairly bearish 
uh, signal. But what it does, I think, what it does really need with respect to this is it requires confirmation. So, in terms of the weekly chart and the direction and how far away it is from its moving average, I certainly think there is potential for sterling care to come right back down to around about 175 from from where it is currently at the moment. In terms of the, I'm being asked as to whether or not this would push the um, American indices back to the highs. I think what it will, well, yes, I mean, I think it will because what we've seen now with the S&P is we push back above in the pre-market at 27.45 level. So I certainly think there's potential for us to come back to these peaks that we saw at the end of February. If we look at the four-hour chart, we can see that we can see that here. There was this similar peak here um, on this four-hour candle around about. 27.54 which is currently where we are at the moment but certainly I think in terms of the overall story um, the the weakness of the wages numbers would appear to suggest that the the trickle down effect of higher wages is probably not as aggressive as markets were originally pricing in and ultimately I think that could be um, slightly bearish for the dollar in the short term and looking at the 10-year yield we're now at 286.80 so again we're backing off those highs that we saw earlier this week so so again I think this is a slightly negative dollar story a slightly positive stock story and we're certainly seeing that now and I think that there's a good chance we can retest the highs that we saw at the end of February as a result of that uh, because it takes off the table albeit very very briefly um, until the next um, evidence that we've got high inflation trickling down the prospect of four rate rises so we're still going to get we're still going to get a fed rate rise this month i think that's pretty much priced in um, but um, the, the real debate is not about whether or not we'll get one rate rise this month it, it's whether or not we get one in june one in september and one in december and at the moment markets are pricing in one this month one in june one in september one in december I think now the calculus has shifted back slightly to three. So one this month, one possibly in June, and maybe one in September or December, but not both. Uh, and I certainly think that's what I'm I'm looking for. But certainly in terms of of euro dollar, um, we should see we should see the market come back and retest um, certainly 123.40. I think. I think 123.80 could be stretching it a bit, but certainly I think we need to take out this series of peaks through here. But certainly on the four-hour chart, I think we've, we've, we could well have seen the lows in the short term, and we could well start to edge back towards this this sort of area, 123.30 initially, and then retest this sort of area around about 123.70. So these series of peaks all the way through here. I'm very big. I'm a very big proponent of looking at previous highs and lows to look for areas of congestion, support and resistance. So in terms of being long euro dollar, while not wanting to steer you in one direction or the other, because I cannot do that, I, I would say that ultimately we could well have seen the lows for today, um, depending obviously on any news that comes out from central bankers or what have you. And... Um, we could well drift slightly higher over the course of uh, the rest of the afternoon. But as I say, that's not to say that we won't retest that 122.80 level that we saw earlier today because markets have a habit of doing that. They hammer out a low, they bounce off it, and then they look, and re they, they, they look to retest it um, to see whether or not there's ready buying interest down there. If we look at the client sentiment, um, we can get an idea of what our most profitable clients are doing with respect to how they're positioned and we can see that it's not wholly conclusive but certainly there has been a move higher to for cash positions around about 58% long 42% short and they're up 4% um, they're up 4% from where they were 24 hours ago so I think the bias here is that the cash positions are slightly biased to the upside but um you know, not aggressively so, because you also have to bear in mind the counterfactual in terms of what the ECB wants with respect to euro dollar. So, you know, I would argue 123.80 is optimistic. That's not to say you won't have it, 
but ultimately that seems to me at this point in time um, it, it, it could well be any other questions ladies and gents before I move on and have a quick look at gold okay so let's move on to gold gold is not really particularly that exciting decent support around about 1305 seeing a little bit of weakness in gold prices at the moment on the back of those numbers but ultimately I wouldn't expect to see um, I wouldn't expect to see much of a decline below the lows that we've seen thus far but certainly I think it's difficult to make the case for gold to rally significantly on the back of those numbers we could see a little bit of uh, sideways trading between 1305 1310 and 1320 again heading into the weekend it's highly unlikely that we're going to be moving significantly one way or the other um, moving on to crude oil I've been I've noticed actually some fairly interesting patterns starting to um, evolve in the crude oil contract you can see that here we're getting progressively lower highs and starting to get a little bit in terms of lower lows certainly in terms of West Texas WTI we can see that here getting a little bit of a rebound finding a bit of a base around about 60 bucks but we are still above the lows that we saw in February but as in the case of a lot of the other charts that I've been looking at the lows the rebounds are getting a little bit shallower and that suggests to me that maybe the long positions that we're seeing in crude oil are starting to get a little bit tired as traders wait um, a much shorter time frame to get out of their long positions this four hour chart does suggest that we could well see a little bit of a rebound back to around about 61 and a half 62 but overall the, the 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 trend in the medium term does appear to be for us to come back lower and retest those lows that we saw at uh, in in the middle of february and if we look at the brent contract as well we can see a similar sort of pattern unfolding before I sign off I'm going to do a quick sort of little pre preview of next week um, because next week we've got a couple of things that could actually affect the pound um, but before I do that I'm going to be summing up uh, the, um, the Brent crude and again it's a similar sort of story here um, decent support around about $63.10 63.20 finding a little bit of a rebound on the crude contract as a result of a slightly a uh, slightly weaker dollar um, and we could and I say we could head back to around about 65 or uh, 66 dollars a barrel but um, yeah sim similar sort of story with Brent and WTI potentially a little bit of a little bit of concern that um, US shale output is likely to keep um, the oversupply um, and the overhang um, in favor of the supplies as opposed to the demand and we could get a move back towards these lows that we saw in February so looking ahead looking ahead because I think this is important we've got a couple of items next week um, let's look at euro sterling in, in that context because I think um, in the context of euro sterling I think the weakness of the euro could actually be beneficial to the pound we're certainly seeing it on the daily chart every time we've tried to get back above 89.50 we've really struggled to really maintain any sort of traction 89 20 30 I've drawn it in there um, if I just get rid of that just reset that and then draw in another horizontal line through through there there we go so around about 89.70 um, which is pretty much the highs that we've seen since sort of November last year every time we've tried to get back above that we've been bashed back down again so there's an awful lot of brexit headlines and sterling is an awful lot more political currency than probably any other currency at the moment let's not forget that the Italian elections have still thrown up an unresolved outcome and ultimately that's likely to um, weigh a little bit I think on euro dollar so you've got to you've got to take that into account as well um, but ultimately what I would expect to see is that euro sterling could actually weigh on the upside for euro dollar 
because we're looking at the pound the pound still got fairly decent support around about 137 and a half um, and looking at the way the two currencies have behaved today the pound is flat on the day but euro dollar is down two tenths of one percent which is pretty much in line with what euro sterling is doing at the moment so I'm looking euro sterling 88 70 80 that's a little bit of a support level in the short term I still expect this range to remain intact so I would expect over the course of the next week or so for us to come down in euro sterling towards 88 10 88 20 we've got the autumn not the autumn we've got the spring statement on Tuesday next week and the Chancellor will basically the Chancellor of the Exchequer will basically lay out his um, latest plans for, with respect to the US economy the, the lady the US economy UK economy latest assessments borrowing targets GDP targets and what have you and he is on course to actually come in underneath his borrowing target for this year round by around about 10 or 11 billion which when you consider all the warnings of doom and gloom with respect to what Brexit would cause is no mean feat record tax revenues last year would appear to suggest that while the UK economy is lagging behind its European peers it's also further along the economic cycle so I would expect that to be the case in any case we've also got Chinese industrial production and retail sales data coming up next week um, and again here as with the trade data earlier this week and the CPI data this morning I would expect Chinese New Year to skew this data so I'm not really expecting anything too substantive in terms of how well the Chinese economy is doing but it could still be a driver we've also got US retail sales for February now retail sales have been falling short of expectations in the US for the last couple of months despite all this talk of rising wages those average earnings numbers are disappointing so maybe um, next week's retail sales numbers could well be a little bit disappointing well we'll have to wait and see but ulti but ultimately I think th those are the three key things that I'm looking out for next week and obviously any Brexit headlines with respect to the EU's and the UK's negotiations when it comes to arriving at a final trade agreement that are likely to move the pound around um, otherwise unless anyone else has got any other questions I'm going to wrap this up I'd like to thank you all for listening um, and um, wish you all a great weekend and before I do that do you want to have another look at euro dollar okay um, I say uh, you know my my view on euro dollar hasn't changed I think we'll find some decent support around about this sort of area 122.60 here is the support level that I've been targeting if we break below that then I think we could well um, if we break below that then we could go quite a bit lower but as long as we hold above 122.60 I would expect to see a rebound back to rules around about 123.30 123.40 but no more than that with respect to Periscope Periscope if you if you follow me on Twitter and look in my timeline you'll see where my Periscope recordings are because it'll have a PRS link to them um, I record them at around about 8.30 in the morning but just look on my Twitter timeline mhewson underscore cmc okay so as I say I record that I, I, I will always endeavor to try and record that every day when I'm in the office um, you know if um, if uh, technology permits but uh, all it is is just a quick pricey of my morning update which um, I post on the website so as I say uh, thank you very much for listening ladies and gentlemen um, have a great weekend and um, I'll speak to you all well I hope to speak to you all either on Twitter or um, join the Monday market webinar with my colleague David at 12.15 on Monday when he has a quick look at the week ahead.